joining us today. I'm Teresa Marentet, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit. Overall, 12,927 individuals have been tested for COVID-19. Currently, we have 1,704 tests that are pending. For those of you who are awaiting test results for COVID-19, please check the Ministry of Health's online portal or the link on our website. Please remember that while you are awaiting your results, you must remain in self-isolation. I will now share the most current case counts. There are 72,278 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 21,236 cases in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 108 cases and Sar Sarnia-Lambton has reported 212 cases. Michigan now has 48,391 cases with 9,973 cases being in Detroit. Today we are reporting 751 cases of COVID-19 in our community, an increase of six cases from yesterday. 38% of our cases have occurred in long-term care homes, including both residents and staff. 387 cases have resolved. 23 people are in hospital. The increased cases being reported today as resolved is due to a review of those cases that were previously deemed unknown, pending further investigation, and 20 people who were self-isolating and have now recovered. 17% of our cases are between the ages of 20 and 29 years. 15% of our cases are between the ages of 50 and 59, and 20% of our cases are 80 years and older. Our youngest case is eight years old. 43% of our cases are male, 56% are female, and 1% is unknown. Our community has lost a total of 62 people to COVID. 47 deaths have occurred among residents in long-term care and retirement homes. Our health unit is working with 17 long-term care and retirement homes that are currently experiencing a COVID-19 outbreak. Testing for COVID-19 is based on a clinical assessment. Common symptoms include fever, a new or worsening cough, and shortness of breath. However, other symptoms may be present, such as a sore throat, unexplained fatigue, an increase in falls, nausea, vomiting, chills, and headaches. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, there are several options. Complete the online self-assessment tool at uh, Ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary care provider for a phone or virtual assessment. To access a local health care provider, a local walk-in clinic, or virtual medical assessment, please visit eHealthWindsorEssex.ca. Windsor-Essex has two assessment centers, Erie Shores Healthcare in Leamington and Windsor Regional Hospital Alep Campus. Please note that testing is available for people who have symptoms of COVID-19. Please continue to visit wechu.org for the most current information and case counts. Before I turn it over to Dr. Ahmed, I just want to send out a thank you to our partners at BANA. We received this token of appreciation today and want everyone at BANA to know how much this active kindness means to us during this time. Thank you very much. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us again on our Facebook Live session. COVID-19 pandemic has changed us in so many ways. Every day, we learn new ways to control the virus causing COVID-19. Since the beginning of this pandemic, we are faced with many, many policy challenges. Public health policies can improve the physical, social, economic, and environmental conditions in which people live, work, and play. All policy decisions that we make are based on evidence and it should be based on evidence. In time like these, scientists around the world are adding new evidence every day. Some evidence validates our previous knowledge. Some evidence 
adds new knowledge to us, for us, and some evidence modify or change our initial knowledge about the COVID-19. Since the beginning, we learned immediately that not all information that we read on internet or hear from people are accurate. There is a lot of misinformation still out there. The timely communication of relevant, credible information to public health action and drive prevention is at the heart of what public health does. Strong and swift public health action led Canada to a different trajectory compared to Italy, USA, Spain, UK, Russia, Brazil, and many other countries. Public health actions and recommendations impacts everyone, and understandably, everyone may have a different perspective on these actions and recommendations. The decision that we make in public health is always grounded on evidence and is taken to protect the health and well-being of everyone and not one single individual. Please listen to the experts and their recommendations and do not fall into the misinformation trap. When public health recommendations, when making public health recommendations, we cannot ignore the importance of applying ethical principles to our decision making. These ethical principles are applied to address inequities, to ensure stable health system infrastructures, engage everyone in a dialogue, to communicate truthfully and transparently, and help allow us to revisit decisions frequently. It is our commitment at the Windsor Essex County Health Unit to provide you with the most up-to-date evidence-based information to help you and everyone else to protect from COVID-19. Please visit our website for most up-to-date credible information on COVID-19. As we are seeing more and more people outdoors and many businesses opening up, it is important to revisit some of the recommendations to ensure the safety and well-being of our residents. I am now recommending that residents wear a cloth mask when in public settings, where they cannot ensure physical distancing of two meters from others. This can include, but not limited to trips to the grocery stores, park, or when accessing public transit. Cloth masks or non-medical masks can provide an extra layer of protection for individuals in their fight to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Medical masks such as surgical masks and N95 respirators should only be utilized in healthcare settings and for direct care of patient and are not recommended for general public. As the provincial government continues to reopen services, including non-urgent medical services, the supply of personal protective equipment, including masks, will be of paramount importance. Wearing a cloth mask reduces the likelihood of you spreading the respiratory droplets to others. In other words, it can protect others from your germs. A cloth mask does not protect you from germs of others. When people wear these masks at a community level, we will reduce the risk of spreading the disease. The key part of using the cloth mask is its appropriate usage. If mask is not used appropriately, it can also cause harm. This recommendation is meant to build, meant to build upon other public health recommendations and should not take the place of effective public health measures, including physical distancing, hand washing, and limiting trips to public settings. Let me reemphasize this point again. A cloth mask is an additional layer of protection and does not replace any of the other public health recommendations. Cloth mask can provide protection for, for, for others from your germs, but they can also become a source of infection if not worn properly. When using a cloth mask, you should wash your hands immediately before putting it on. Use the air loops or ties to secure it. Ensure that it fits snugly around your mouth and nose and allows for adequate breathing. Do not touch or adjust your ma mask while wearing it. Do not use mask on children under the age of two. Remove using the air loops or straps and try to avoid touching the front of the mask. Place your mask directly into a washing machine. Wash your hands after handling the mask, and wash your mask using hot water. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the media. 
We'll start with AMA 100. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, I know in the past you said that those masks um, gave people a false sense of security. Uh, why the change of heart now? So there are a couple of reasons for that, uh, and I'm glad that you mentioned it. Uh, one thing is, as we said, as we are moving and learning more and more from co for COVID-19, uh, there has been a shift, and uh, many people are using the mask, and uh, over the time with strong messaging, the usage is getting better. So that's one indication. Second indication is people are outside more now. Previously, there were not enough people, many people outside. The recommendation was to stay indoors for most of the part. Right now, as we are seeing that there's a gradual reopening of all these businesses, more people outside, and the likelihood of people coming in contact with other people is getting higher. And that is why in order to, for at a community level protection, it adds an extra layer of protection, especially when people are unable to maintain that two meter physical distancing. And as I said, it's an added layer of protection. It does not replace any of the previous recommendation and uh, it shouldn't give any false sense of security to people. People, everyone needs to still follow the same recommendations of physical distancing, hand washing, and uh, staying home when they're sick. I know when I wore mine earlier this week on assignment, I was having a tough time not adjusting it. Do you have any recommendations to that? Because I know that actually increases the risk of me getting it. So I think it really depends on the size of the mask that you're using and uh, what material that you're using to adjust it. And uh, as I said, if adjustments are needed, you can make those adjustments before you head out after washing your hands. And then when that, when that is appropriately adjusted, uh, you shouldn't be touching it again, especially from the front of the mask. You can still use it every time you're touching it, if possible. Use a, ha a hand sanitizer if hand washing is not available adjust it and then try not to adjust it again and adjust it over around the ear loops rather than from the front of the mask to adjust it. Thank you. Any questions from Windsor Wright? Um, yeah, on the mask topic, I, I know a lot of people are using rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle to disinfect groceries and a lot of other things. Is that effective to spray your mask down as a way to disinfect it or is it better to use throw it in the washing machine? Uh, the way to disinfect is to uh, wash your mask properly. Any kind of disinfectant that you're using, especially on a cloth mask, it has limited uh, effectiveness and uh, it, it can also put those chemicals stay in your mask if it's not washed and then you're breathing in those chemical. So I think you have to be careful in what and how you're using it. The best way, I would not recommend using any kind of disinfectant on those masks, especially the cloth mask. It needs to be washed after uh, you, you use it and after every trip, if you have a couple, you know, if, if you're coming back home, you just throw it in the washing machine and then get another mask and then wear it if you're going outside. But again, some of these public health recommendations still exist. Limit your trips. You should not be going outside many, many times a day. Go for the things that you need to do and then come back and then stay home uh, as much as you can. Any questions from CBC? Yes, good morning. I saw there was about 700 new tests that were taken. Where, where is that coming from? Is that testing all of the retirement homes again? Is this testing the uh, greenhouse workers again? I know Green Hill has some more people test positive. So it's a combination of everything. And uh, a lot of the testing uh, was completed, uh, which was uh, conducted in collaboration with EMS. Uh, uh, so that was done, but there are still a number of homes that have uh, their staff uh, that are currently being tested. Some of the testing is coming from the assessment centers, and uh, also with the expanded testing, there are some other priority patient groups that are identified as, uh, uh, as ones to be tested. So it's a combination of all of that, and I don't have those breakdown uh, to give you an exact detail. I know you said some of the long-term care was taking care of the testing themselves. Is that all done now? Uh, I believe so. That was uh, based on uh, our schedule. Everyone should be complete. It should have been completed. Uh, the staff piece, as I said, staff is still depending on when they are. They have the shift and whether they are being tested. But the residents uh, are all tested. Thank you. Any questions from Blackburn? Yeah, and on top of the, I guess, 
um, tests that you have been getting back, it seems like you're starting to get more back a day, but there's still 1,700 pending. Um, what's the timeline right now for people getting tests back? Again, it, it ranges from four to seven days, um, and they, they, the lab is using a, a priority-based testing, especially for the ones that are in the hospital, in ICU, or in care where they need a faster result. Um, but uh, the majority of the test is still is, it takes four to seven days for us, uh, which is uh, a concern from our perspective because we want those test results uh, coming back to us sooner than later. So have you heard anything more on that? I mean, everything we hear from the province perspective is, you know, they're reaching their goals and they're putting more, getting more tests done every day. What have you heard? Well, uh, clearly, yeah, the, there's been a significant uh, effort to increase the, the testing, daily testing every day, and also uh, improving the system of how the logistics and all those details are being uh, conducted at this point from a specimen transfer to the lab and then the lab capacity, and if it gets over capacity, it's rerouted to a different lab. All those uh, processes and logistics are currently being looked at. Um, there have been some improvement, and the expectation is there will be further improvement on that. Any questions from CTV? Sorry, it probably flew right over my head, but I'm just curious, how do you properly take a mask off? Because I'm sure there are others like me who haven't really been uh, a heavy user of masks, so I just want to make sure that I'm taking it off the right, the right way. So. So first thing first, as I said, you, you should always wash your hands before you touch the mask. And then after washing, your, uh, you, you take it out from your ear loop, and then you remove it. And then you go all the way up to the other side, and then you remove that ear loops from there. Or you can maybe use your both hands to take it out. Try not to touch it from the front, because that's probably potentially the area that may have been come in contact with any drops or any, anything that, uh, that you are touching. And as long as you are not touching the front, and when you're taking it off, Make sure that you're putting straight to where it needs to be washed rather than putting it in some place and then accidentally touching it again. So as, as you remove it, you just immediately throw it into the, the um, uh, laundry bin uh, to wash it. So basically you don't take it off. Get off after I leave the store, wait till I get home and then just throw it right in. Yes, yeah, yeah, or you can put it in a, in, in, if, in a, in a bag if you, if you like, if you don't want to wear the mask because some, for some people they cannot use the mask for a longer period of time. And as long as they are doing that, uh, they're putting it in the bag, and then when they're home, they can put it in the, in the washing. Okay, good. Any questions from the Windsor Star? Okay, any further questions from AM800? Dr. Ahmed, did you want to say anything about that probable case of Kawasaki disease at Windsor Regional at all with the child? Um, I don't know what I want to say, but uh, yeah, I am aware of that uh, case that's currently being investigated. Um, and uh, I think I did touch on that part yesterday with respect to what uh, this means. And uh, right now the link of, uh, between Kawasaki like disease with COVID-19 or post-COVID-19 uh, connection is currently being investigated at this time. Uh, there are other uh, type of vasculitic reactions that are uh, also being postulated uh, as a post-COVID-19 uh, impact, and uh, all of those are currently being studied. The only way to know for sure is when we do these type of testing and rule out any other potential cause, especially uh, in children when we are talking about if we don't have a positive COVID-19 testing on those individuals, and when we start to do antibody testing on them, and if it comes back positive, then it will just further reinforce in what we know. Uh, but uh, the science is still uh, out there, and uh, we are learning more and more every day. And that's why I reemphasize the importance of using evidence-based in many of these policy decisions or making those recommendations. Right now, it's being actively looked at right now. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from Windsor 8? No, no, thank you. Blackburn? No, thank you. CTV? So yesterday our story was, um, you know, this two-year-old with potential Kawasaki, right? So keep him under observation. I get a, a message, or we got a message saying that the kid's been sick for five weeks. So apparently the parents are frustrated that the kid's been sick for five weeks, and 
it's it's like a drawn out process for them. So, what do you say to, to to them and to other kids who are potentially going through this? So, I think the first thing is very important to get into contact with your healthcare provider. And if you do not have your primary care provider open, there are many other virtual assessments that are available. And if those assessments lead to a further in-person visit, uh, either through another primary care provider or to the hospital setting, I think people should go there. And in any case, it's uh, whether we're talking about a COVID-related Kawasaki disease or just uh, Kawasaki disease in general, they, they, the disease process can be long. And uh, there could be a more, uh, it, it could take more time for the body to um, uh, to to stop that autoimmune type reaction that is happening. And uh, it can be frustrating. It can be, as a parent myself, I can understand that what a parent might go through. Uh, it, is a, it is a difficult uh, uh, thing that uh, your child is sick, but uh, you, should, you should seek uh, um, immediate uh, healthcare attention as, uh, uh, and go to your healthcare provider. They, they sent the story was an exaggeration, um, but I think it was more of a precautionary measure from the hospital's point of view that, you know, the kid needed to be kept in, into, you know, into the hospital. So do you think that that should have happened earlier, or is it because of the mandate and from the, uh, uh, the guidance from the province that, uh, that this kid may have ended up in the hospital for a longer period than, than needed, I guess, or whatever? I, I would just put a disclaimer that I don't know the case detail of this kid and I cannot comment whether there was a need for hospitalization or not. The only thing that I think it's, uh, it's important that uh, because there has been a heightened awareness about uh, Kawasaki disease-like syndrome uh, and uh, especially in this COVID era and uh, some concerns about uh, COVID causing this. And uh, I think the, the, the concern is, obviously, if someone is coming in with an atypical symptom of COVID, what are the other measures that we need to do, first of all, to protect this child? I think that's the basic clinical goal in every case. And then building it further on to do some additional uh, uh, protection if needed. If, if, let's say if there was never a nasopharyngeal swab done, Maybe it's time that the kid should be tested, and then the, based on the results, any actions further that uh, public health actions or a clinical action is needed, that can happen. So I think it's a combination of all of that. And uh, in terms, I don't think that it would be an exaggeration of uh, of, uh, um, of a recommendation. Yeah, I'm sure that all these recommendations are uh, made based on the best interest of the patient, and also based on the best interest of the community. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.